How you guys doing? Good morning. Good morning, March 7. Um, I'm hoping that everybody's healthy. Um, and everybody's taking time to complete the assignments. I know there are a lot. Of, I've, I've had many conversations with students as to, Mr. Wilford, please stop giving us assignments. And that means that maybe your teachers are not giving you as many. Um, I apologize if I'm giving you a lot. It's just that we still have a lot to cover in our curriculum. But believe it or not, we're up to our last two units. And we should be able to complete those in June. Uh, for Math 7, I just want you guys to know, I did skip over one um, I skipped over one unit um, regarding probability uh, only because it's a very hands-on um, unit and because we don't have time to interact right now I skipped over it doesn't mean that we're not going to cover it we may cover the next few units which is unit 12 and 13 which is area circumference and some angles and then if we have time I plan on jumping back to probability and seeing if we can make um, some type of hands-on activities happen um, online but um, for now, we're going to skip over that one because it's a very hands-on uh, unit. But I want, to, I want you to complete today 10 Delta Math problems regarding um, circumference. This is our brand new unit on circumference and area. And believe it or not, they're not complicated. You're going to be given a formula. And because you're given a formula, all you need to do is apply the understanding to this formula. So I'm going to give you some information right now that can allow you to be successful in completing the Delta Math. And then... Um, Please complete it, and everything pretty much in this unit and the next unit, well, in this unit especially, uh, area circumference is just following the formula. Solve for the formula, and you'll be good. I know I'm looking rough, all right? I know I'm looking rough. Quarantine's got me, and I'm like, eh, I ain't doing anything. All right, so let's, um, let's dive in, okay? So if you were to or go to Delta Math, right, deltamath.com, and you would open up your screen, I'm going to share mine right you will see this and i'm hoping that we have all have been able to, to complete the box plots uh interpreting box plot activity creating some box plots um patterns um adding integers all these wonderful ones i've done since we started um our online schooling so from homework four and up these are all the ones that you should have completed uh since we've been uh, working in school but as you can see unit 12 lesson one um there is no worksheet for it. And the reason why is because I'm designing this curriculum day by day and putting it all together. And because uh, this is my first year teaching seventh grade, it's not completed yet. So it will be completed before the new year hits. But right now, I, I haven't created this lesson. So that's why we're doing it on Delta Math right now. Okay. So you should see that it says circumference in terms of pi. When you click it, what you'll see is it's going to ask you a question. The question here is asking, it tells you the diameter of a circle is 17 centimeters. Find the circumference in terms of pi. So let me, before we break down how to do this, I need to explain, well, what is circumference, right? Because I know that's probably the question that you have in your head, like, okay, we just jumped to something brand new. I'm hoping he gives us more information about what actually a circumference is. And that's exactly what I want to do. So for example, let's say I have a circle. And you should see a circle on my screen that I'm drawing right this circle um has a lot of points that maybe you know maybe you don't know but let me start off by saying this one if i go straight across in a circle that's known as my diameter right so i'm going to try to put a little note there so that way you can see it i'm going to point to it and just tell you that this right here this is something called a diameter okay it's called a diameter of a circle I don't know if you, if you ever learned that before. Maybe you learned that in um, sixth grade, right? Um, but this is the diameter of a circle, right? Um, a circumference, right? We want to talk about circumference. And we're going to talk about two things today. We're going to talk about circumference. And we're going to talk about area. And, and, and these are two major measurements on almost every two-dimensional shape. Now, however, they're not always called circumference and area. When we talk about a square, we call it perimeter and we call it area, right? Uh, when we talk about a three-dimensional shape, we call it surface area, and we call it volume. But when we deal with two-dimensional shapes, we always know that the inside is gonna be known as our area. The outside is gonna be known as our uh, circumference. So right now, we're gonna deal with the circle. We're talking about the circumference of a circle, and I'm just gonna draw a green circle just to show you circumference really is all of the space around this circle. So I want to figure out, well, what is the actual full measurement of the actual circle itself? Not what's inside, not how much space is inside, but what's the measurement? If I were to take a, um, 
a, a tape or a ruler or something like that and go from one end of the circle all the way around to right back at the other. And how much does that measure? What is the full length of this circle is what we want to find. And uh, this is a very common question. You'll see that this is, uh, it, uh, and it, it adjusts based on a lot of different things. So even in real life, we calculate the circumference of baseballs and basketballs in order to determine if the basketball can even fit inside of an actual basketball rim, right? So these are real life scenarios that you can apply to knowing this particular, um, this concept of circumference. But first I wanna talk about how do we calculate it? There's a formula to calculate circumference and that formula is not hard at all. And I'm gonna write it right here. The formula is C is equal to two pi, and I don't have a pi symbol. Um, let me see. Uh, maybe I could make one. Let me, let me write it. I'm actually gonna write it for you because here, you may not see the fullness of it. And I gotta explain, cause you've probably seen pi before. I know we have, we talked about it in class, um, but this pi symbol is really used when we talk about circles, right? The person who invented pi, uh, it came because of the fact that when they went to go and calculate a circle's circumference, they couldn't figure out the exact number, but they kept figuring out it was 3.1415 and and as you know there are a million numbers in pi and they still continue to this day because th that number is is, is is not a definite number they wasn't able to figure it out but this is the formula to calculate circumference circumference is equal to two this symbol is pi times r now if you notice in delta math there is a pi symbol there so you know on our actual calculator you'll probably be like well i can't how do i put pi in here you're just gonna click on that pi button and I'm gonna show you how to do it in a second. This is the formula we're gonna to use to calculate the circumference. They want all of your answers in terms of pi, so you don't have to worry about, um, you don't have to worry about uh, actually multiplying by pi to get a decimal number. Don't worry about decimals, we're just gonna put in the actual number with pi. Now, what you need to know in order to really get the answer for this particular problem is you need to know what does R stand for? What does R stand for? Now, R stands for something called radius, okay? R stands for radius. I'm just gonna draw a little arrow here and write the word radius, okay? Now, if you learned this before, that's great. Push yourself in a, a little bit of a head, but if you're like, okay, I don't really understand radius, let me explain it. Radius is half of the diameter. So remember I drew this red line on the circle above? That's the diameter. Half of that red line is known as the radius. Half of that red line is known as your radius. So if I were to find the radius of a circle, I need to figure out, well, what is half of my diameter? So half of your diameter is known as your radius, okay? And if you were to figure out the radius, then we could just plug it into the formula and you would have your answer. So let me actually show you it based on the problem that they just gave us. So they say that we have a circle. They tell us the diameter of this circle is 17. So I can say, okay, well, D, which is diameter, is 17. What does that mean for my radius? Radius has to be what? Remember, I said the radius is half of your diameter. So what you would have to do is figure out, okay, what is half of 17? Now, if you want to type that on a calculator, 17 divided by two, right, that's fine. Or if you remember that 16, right, which is next to 17, or 18, which is next to 17, and you can figure out what that is, you'll be able to say, okay, well, 16 is really eight, right? And half of 16 is eight. That means half of 17 is 8.5, it's in the middle, okay? Um, so our radius is 8.5, our diameter is 17. Now we can just literally go right to our formula. Our formula says C is equal to two times pi times our radius. And now we're not gonna put R, we're gonna put 8.5 because that's what our radius is, okay? Now, can I type that in as my answer here? Yes, I could. I could type in um, two pi symbol parentheses 8.5, but they may want this to be completely simplified. Now, I'm gonna try to submit it to see if it's gonna give me a, a check to see if it's right, but they may not give me a check because they may want it to be fully simplified. And I'm gonna show you what that means in a second, but let me check it, let's see. Okay, good. They want us to fully simplify. That's why they're not gonna give me the right answer here. All right, now what does that mean? That means that this is all multiplication, two times pi times 8.5. Multiplication uh, is 
is um uh, is, is a is a part of the commutative property, which means that I can rewrite this instead of it being two times pi times eight point five, I can make it two times eight point five times pi, right? I can make the numbers. I can move this eight point five by the two first, and then multiply pi last. So I would really say, okay, well, what is two times eight point five? Which we know what two times eight point five is. That's not new to us, right? We just divided it before, so we should be able to figure this out relatively easily. 2 times 8.5, that gives us our 17, and then we end up multiplying that by pi. So, Mr. Warford, can I just say that 17 times pi is the answer? No. You can't, um, but you can. It depends on what they tell you. So, in this case here, they're telling you the diameter is that. So, another way to calculate circumference, which is very easy to know, is you can say that circumference is really equal to pi times diameter, pi times diameter. So if they did give you the diameter and they want you to calculate circumference, then yeah, just do 17 times pi and you have your answer, right? There are other data that they may give you. They may give you the area and so on, but I don't think they're gonna give you the area here. I'm gonna try another one with you to just look at it. But what I want you to know is sometimes they may give you the radius. If they give you the radius, know that you need to do two times pi times radius and then multiply the radius times two, or if they gave you the diameter, then yes, do pi times diameter and you'll get your answer. So let me edit this one to give you the right answer so that we can check it. Seventeen pi, cool. So seventeen pi is what we're gonna say our answer is, and they're gonna say it's right. Okay. Now look here. Um, I'm gonna clear my text in a second, but I just want to look here at what they did as well. Diameter was 17. They said the radius was 8.5. We said that too. Good. Right? You see the picture that they're showing you. That line is diameter. Half a diameter is radius. That's exactly what we did. Good. All right. So, conference. They tell you this formula 2 pi r. We did that 2 pi r. Good. Then they did it. They multiplied it. And then look what they did. Oh, you could have saved time by doing what? Circumference is equal to pi times diameter. That's exactly what we did. Awesome. Okay. Uh, and that's how we do it. Now, keep in mind that this is exactly how they, they, they calculate certain things. Now, we keep in mind that the Earth and the Moon and the, the planets are three-dimensional shapes, but they do calculate their radius based on these formulas. So even though I know we're learning them and they're like, well, these are, these are great things to learn, I guess, because it's in school and we got to learn them. They're real-life things that are used every single day, especially from a standstill point, because we may not be able to calculate uh, go out like for the earth. We can't, uh, unless you're an astronaut, you, we wasn't able to, at one point, we wasn't able to just go and measure the full circumference of the earth. What we needed was the radius, which we can identify the radius based on where we position ourselves on earth to where the actual earth ends in terms of the sky or, or in terms of like going to the atmosphere. So we was able to calculate radius on the earth um, and we was able to calculate diameter a little bit of the Earth quicker than we was able to calculate circumference. So we used radius and diameter to calculate the full circumference of the Earth without actually going outside of space to do it. So these are real things that are, are applicable today. And, um, and if anyone were to push themselves to become better at math, you'll see that a lot of these things are real are, are related to a lot of things in terms of even the, the, the traffic and how things move. It's, it's, it's all relative. But I want you to practice calculating circumference. Um, if you need help, please rewatch the video, right? Or even put show example and let, let them break it down and show you exactly how it's done. I'm going to clear the text. I want to see what the next problem looks like. Here, they tell you the diameter again. Using the formulas that we just mentioned just now, you'll be okay with being able to calculate all 10 of these on your own, all right? Please watch the video. I'm hoping everybody does well. Um, you can always email me or reach out to me if you have any questions. I look forward to talking to you guys later. All right. Have a wonderful day.